Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have an awesome little stack and it's from HGLRC. Now this thing is called the XJB F2 F428 TX20. Now this comes in many varieties. Uh, you can get the stack with the 4 one ESC and the flight controller or with a VTX also, also with a micro FPV camera. However, the one, the stack that I've gotten today is just the ESC flight controller VTX. I've got, this is the second stack actually I've gotten. The first one, it was just the ESC and the flight controller. Now, why did I purchase a second stack? One, I love this thing. Now, why did I love this thing? I installed it into a three inch uh, Jeb RC Sparrow frame with the Brother Hobby 1407, I think, motors, which is obviously for a three inch. And it was just insane. I had no noise. You know, I was a, I was a bit worried because they're pretty nasty motors. Let me just show you. I mean, the look, look at this. This is the magnets. That is that is that is just massive. And usually motors with stronger magnets do tend to create more noise. So seeing that as a real world test for me, that's a huge pass. Not a single hiccup of noise was in my video feed on that current setup. However, obviously things vary. Motors vary. A lot of things could vary to introduce noise into the system. Now, uh, what I have done here is this is the second one I've purchased because, like I said, I loved it so much. It was very good. However, there's, you know, something just always, you know, something just cannot be perfect for some reason. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you take a look here, let's zoom in here. So if we take a look here. This is the ESC and obviously your XT 60, 30, whatever is going to be connected right here. Now these are very tiny pads, but that's not the issue. The issue is now what I had to do is basically salvage these pieces from my three inch that I really loved. And why did I have to do that? Well, when you install your XT60 or whatever you want right here, make sure you zip tie the hell out of that wire because I have ripped the pads off, thus leaving it useless. I mean, the ESC is useless, but the flight controller is still good. Now I do highly, the flight control is just awesome. It does have OSD, has everything you need. So as you can tell here, it has uh, the pads. Let's take a look at this one actually. It has the pads on two sides. Now I did rip both sides actually right off and it really, really hurt me. Like I really got frustrated and I really got angry and it was just a huge letdown. But even with all that, you know, it is, it's considered to be my fault, but you know, what do you, you know, I wish the pads were larger and just stronger here. So this is one of the biggest downfalls for me on, on this stack, but still is my favorite stack. So I have to be extra cautious of how I install the power cables that are coming from the battery on the pads. And you should really take that into consideration because that's very important because you could basically throw your ESC away then. So I was very upset and very frustrated. I did not talk to HGLRC. I should write them an email. But at the end, you know, it's my fault. So if they don't help me, then I can't bitch and complain, basically. So back to my topic. This 4-in-1 ESC is pretty awesome. Now, why is it pretty awesome? Well, it's a 20 by 20, which is for micros. The whole sizing is uh, M2, as I believe, I actually forgot. Yeah, M M2 type screws. Now, this thing is rated for 28 amps and a 35 amp burst. So that's, that's just awesome. That's just super awesome, really. For such a small 4-in-1 ESC, and to handle those Brother Hobby motors, I was very impressed, and I fell in love with it. You know, but like I said, the only downside to that is those pads. So just be extra careful. Like if you take a look at the Jep RC Sparrow, if you've seen it, the one that's already pre-built from Jep RC, they have, I think they have the same thing. I don't really remember, but the ESCs also had small pads, but what they did is they zip tied the wire very tightly. So when you pull the battery off the thingy, it will not cause stress here and enable these to pop off. And then basically it just rips this whole thing out and it's terrible. It's really terrible. Now, yes, you could hijack it in a way, possibly, but it's very difficult to find a way to, to, to take that trace and to give a big enough pad to give the full power to the ESC, thus reducing performance and not very reliable. What if you're flying over something and then it just falls out of the sky because something happened? So, you know, uh, take that into consideration about this. Just make sure you secure your battery leads. Now, 
let's talk about some of the specs here. Now, the filtration is very minimal, but I didn't see any noise when I had it on my 3-inch quadcopter. However, today's test is going to be quite a bit different. Well, not today's test, in the upcoming test. I'll explain what I'm doing now. Uh, this is a BB2 4-in-1 ESC, which means it's just rated up to DSHOT 600. That's totally fine. Now, this whole stack here, these two, with the VTX cost $72 and in my opinion that's just a very reasonable price the packaging was terrible which I really love because that reduces the cost so it's not terrible as in the components will get damaged it's just a box and I, I, to be honest I really like that because that cuts down cost by a lot so the flight controller here has an OSD which is super awesome obviously it's stackable with pins so it just keeps the overall build absolutely clean which also is a huge plus so Basically, you just stick these two together and you're good to go. And I really, really, really love that. All you'll need to do is just install your camera, VTX, and your receiver. And that's it. You're done. You, you have a complete quadcopter and your motors, obviously. Now, another thing that you should take into consideration, which is so cool about the fly controller, is it takes a 2 to a 4S because it has a 5-volt regulator built on board to handle up to a 4S, which is which I really like, you know, a lot, actually. So this stack is a huge winner in my book. And why is it such a huge winner in my book? Well, recently I got provided, well, you know, uh, Aeronaut FPV provided me with a couple frames for review. It's a little small, tiny group of people trying to do some feather light frames. And the quality is superb, really. I thought this was a four inch when I first did the video and it turns out it's a five inch. I was just amazed when I actually put this stuff. So what I'm planning on doing is a five inch feather light and it's going to be in the upcoming video where we use this, check this out, this even, you know, the 3D printed parts, they this is what they provided me with. The 3D printed parts' tolerance is just insanely good. I mean, they, they really know what they're doing. Um, I, 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 just, I really love it. The arms are nice. Obviously, you might break an arm here and there. They're very small. It's a feather light. What do you expect? The carbon seems good. It's very rigid. So I really like that also. So check this out, these mounts, so this frame could take a 30 by 30 and a 20 by 20. So the way the 20 by 20 works is with these little adapters. Now the 30 by 30 will obviously be connected right here, but check this out. These adapters are created by TPU. So let's just get a good view here. They are TPU adapters, which means they're 3D printed and they provide dampening as you can see right there. So that's just pretty awesome. Sorry about the focus, the camera's too close. Uh, so it does provide dampening and I am just impressed. Um, you don't know how awesome this thing is. I've just been staring at it for the past hour saying, okay, I'm going to build it. But I said before I build it, I really wanted to make this update video on this uh, stack because when that happened to me, I never really got the time to... Uh, make the update video about the issue with the battery uh, leads, how the pad could be ripped off. So check this out. That's it. This this thing is 150 grams with the motors. And it's a 5 inch. Yes, a 5 inch quadcopter. So the motors are pretty crappy. I just, I'm very lucky that I found them. I will be purchasing other motors. These are 1806 DYS. 2300 kV. Believe it or not, they used to put these on a basically six inch quads back then on the ZMR 250. These are the ones they used to put. And that's the <laughs> 1806 is so small. Then we jumped up to 2205 and we we're just like, oh, wow. And now 2306, 2407, you know, but we've come a very long way. So I don't know. I don't remember how good these motors were. But we're going to actually see how it's going to do on this 5-inch here. I think it's going to be, it's going to have some massive torque. Obviously, it won't have speed because it's 2300 kV, but it should be pretty quick around everything. So I'm really excited for this one, actually. Um, however, as you could tell, these are very old motors and they will not align perfect uh, here. So, yeah, the, because you have two holes on the bottom of the motor that are close and then two that are farther away. And the, this one just has basically the frame just has two holes that are close and I can't put it that way. So uh, I didn't luck. Yeah, you know, I had bad luck on that. Let's just leave it at that for right now. But overall, um, this stack is superb. Uh, the VTX also, I didn't even talk about the VTX. The VTX is up to 350 milliwatts. Now, it depends. Um, this is going to be kind of difficult. We'll check this out. There is no shielding. So I don't know how it will perform. You 
possibly can get noise but it could be from shielding and if you do get noise the first thing i would recommend before a low asr capacitor on a stack like this is try a shielded vtx just do a quick run with a shielded vtx something like the Asian tx 526 is 12 dollars if you don't have much cash and it's nice you get to keep it for a later bigger build and if that's the issue, then you're going to have to figure out a way to do some kind of shielding. But that's that rarely ever happens, but it's very possible and it can happen to anyone. But for me, I'm going to leave this for another build because what I want to use is the uh, run cam a VTX that comes well does it come with it well you can actually purchase it with it with the run cam micro this has a little adapter and it just connects to your camera and that's it my VTX is connected to the camera and I really love this and I salvaged that from my Jeb RC Sparrow so in the next video we're going to be building this guy and uh, this is going to be pretty fun and pretty interesting however it still sucks I really cannot fly until next week because it's, it's pointless to fly it's just it's not even snow anymore it's just rock solid ice it's not snow everything is just ice negative 6 negative 11 negative 12 uh, we barely ever hit zero you know which is good weather if it hits zero here right now and I'm talking in Celsius so uh, overall I really am impressed with this stack and HLRC is doing a great job I wish however like I mentioned before that if they make the pads stronger in a way or just use thicker copper or just something you know the quality is good it's superb it runs beautiful uh it was very i really loved it when i ran it on my jeb rc sparrow and that one was just an insane beast but i didn't even get a chance to do the footage because i did two test runs and on the first test the second test run when i crashed i went to pull the battery i just yanked the whole pad off i was so frustrated but you know things happen and you learn so i don't want you guys to make the same mistake and this is why i'm also adding this into this video also overall though i do highly recommend this stack it's a very good stack um i would definitely pick so I'm, I'm definitely picking up more i'm gonna see i'm gonna bring the one with the camera to actually see how good the camera that's on it maybe it's the same manufacturer as run cam i don't know but it's possible but overall this is going to be a pretty sexy build and it's going to be our next build on the channel and that's going to conclude it for this video guys i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know enjoy my mission join my patreon help me support this channel and document everything i can uh help me get more escs in to do the bench testing and the noise testing on many different components and don't miss the giveaways last month's giveaways where the gtr 90 the diatone gtr 90 and the awesome f100 so every month I'm giving away micros or fly or quads or flight controls. I do at least two giveaways to my Patreons. And um, yeah, and that's it, guys. So you could also use the affiliate links down below. Those greatly support the channel. And that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. So please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.